Hi guys, welcome back to Codemaster Coach, your medical coding tutor. Today we're going to talk about three disease processes that my goal is to break them down for you so that you then can understand how as a coder I then go behind a physician who diagnoses their patient with one of these conditions and look in the, the medical record documentation to try to justify the diagnoses. And remember, I always say, apply yourselves. This is an example of what I mean when I say, apply yourself. So, for example, let's look at autonomic dysreflexia. Autonomic dysreflexia is a syndrome characterized by an abrupt onset of excessively high blood pressure caused by an uncontrolled sympathetic nervous system discharge in persons with spinal cord injuries, usually at or above the T6 level. So with that in mind, guys, always use your resources. I pulled out my code book, and at the front of my code book, I have a picture of the spine. And it breaks down for me exactly where the T6 level is. So with that in mind, anything that would ordinarily cause pain below this level, the T6 level, may trigger a parasympathetic response resulting in bradycardia, which is an excessively slow heartbeat, blurred vision, and sweating. True autonomic dysreflexia is potentially life-threatening and is considered a medical emergency. Code G90.4, autonomic dysreflexia, is used to describe this condition. It is not necessary to code each manifestation or symptom separately. Once the patient has this autonomic dysreflexia, they, they, they um, show signs or symptoms of autonomic dysreflexia. Don't worry about coding the signs or symptoms because you've captured it in that one code, G90.4, for autonomic dysreflexia. Unlike most dual coding, whereby the underlying condition is listed first or sequenced first, in this case, the code for the dysreflexia is sequenced first with an additional code for the underlying chronic condition that has precipitated this life-threatening condition. For example, a pressure ulcer, um, um, urinary tract infection, some type of fecal impaction, stuff like that, that these patients tend to, to suffer with, with these spinal cord injuries. Okay, hydrocephalus. Normal pressure hydrocephalus or secondary normal pressure hydrocephalus can be caused by any condition in which the flow of the cerebral spinal fluid is blocked, such as a subarachnoid hemorrhage, some type of hemorrhage that's blocked, some type of head trauma, cerebral infarction, infection, tumor, or a complication of surgery. All of those can cause this hydrocephalus. So you assign code G91.0, communicating hydrocephalus for the secondary normal um, pressure hydrocephalus. Obstructive hydrocephalus develops secondary to a blockage in normal circulation of cerebral spinal fluid in the brain. In most instances, the blockage affects the third and fourth ventricles at the level of the aqueduct sylvius, also referred to as the aqueductal obstruction, which can result from scarring or tumor. So you assign code G91.1, obstructive hydrocephalus, for this acquired condition. Idiopathic, remember idiopathic, unknown cause, idiopathic normal pressure hydrocephalus can occur without any identifiable cause. It just happens, you just have that blockage. So code 91.2, G91.2, normal pressure hydrocephalus is assigned for this type of acquired hydrocephalus. If the medical record documentation does not specify whether the hydrocephalus is congenital, patient was born with it, or acquired, later on affected by it, G91.9, hydrocephalus unspecified, should be assigned. So what is encephalopathy? You hear that a lot and you always wonder, what is encephalopathy? Encephalopathy is a general term used to describe any disorder 
of cerebral function. It's a very broad term and in most cases it will be preceded by various terms describing the reason, cause, or special condition leading to this brain disorder. It is important to fully or carefully note these additional terms as they will affect code assignment. So for example, anoxic encephalopathy. Now we've learned from medical terminology means anoxic means lack of oxygen, right? So anoxic encephalopathy refers to brain damage due to the lack of oxygen. And you code that as G93.1. What about alcoholic encephalopathy? You're right. It's a serious complication of alcoholic liver disease and is usually caused by excessive drinking for several years. The results are a loss of specific brain function caused by a thiamine deficiency and it's coded G31.2, alcoholic encephalopathy. So what about a hepatic encephalopathy? Yep, for medical terminology, we learned that hepatic means pertaining to liver, right? So hepatic encephalopathy is brain damage due to liver disease. And it's classified to category K72. Because you know most of our liver conditions are under cat in the Ks in your code book. What about metabolic encephalopathy? Metabolic encephalopathy is temporary or permanent damage to the brain due to a lack of glucose, oxygen, or other metabolic agents or organ dysfunction. Symptoms include an altered state of consciousness, usually characterized as deliriums or confusion, agitation, changes in behavior or personality, there may also be symptoms of muscle stiffness and rigidity, tremor, stupor, or coma. Symptoms can develop quickly and may resolve when the condition is reversed. So assign code G93.41, metabolic encephalopathy, for this condition. What about toxic encephalopathy? Toxic encephalopathy is degenerative neurological disorder caused by exposure to a, so a toxic substance. Symptoms include altered mental status, memory loss, small personality changes, lack of concentration, involuntary movement, nausea, fatigue, seizures, arm strength problems, and depression. It's coded to category G92 and a code from category T51 through T65 is assigned first to identify the causative toxic agent. Because remember we said this was toxic encephalopathy, right? And then Wernicke's encephalopathy and Wernicke's is an area in the brain and it's in your diagrams at the beginning of your code book as well identifying where Wernicke's is. That's damage to the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system caused by disorders of the liver such as cirrhosis, hepatitis, malnutrition, and conditions in which blood circulation bypasses the liver entirely. Symptoms can range from mild to severe and consist of various neurological symptoms, including changes in consciousness, reflexes, and behavior. This condition is coded to E51.2. And then last is unspecified encephalopathy. And because it's unspecified, it catches that unspecified code, E93.40. Okay, guys, again, Understand the disease process, exactly what's going on with your patient. Understand the signs and symptoms and understand how to capture those diagnoses. And follow your notes in your books where it tells you to code also or code first. 
And in case of the dysreflexia, remember those signs or symptoms are captured in that one code. Okay guys, that's volume 13 if you want exercises to practice with when it comes to these disease processes. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.